Welcome to the first introduction to the Back to Viz Basics Flourish Edition project. Now, before I share some videos on actually creating some of the visualizations from the Back to Viz Basics project, I thought it would be useful, especially for those of you who haven't used Flourish before, to actually give you a quick tutorial on going through the, the, the tool. And I'm gonna put a bunch of links to different tutorials that the Flourish team has produced and some other things that I think would be useful for you. But in case you wanted a quick tour of what's going on in the tool, I thought I would give you a, that quick little view of what's going on. So let's head over to Flourish. Let me show you what's going on. Okay, so you need to obviously create a, an account. And once you create the account, you're going to come into what looks like a basically an empty projects page. You can see you have your, your basic core part of the directory is my projects. You can add a new folder. Um, and that way you can sort of organize uh, your, your work. Um, the initial prompt here is just create a new visualization. So I'm gonna click this, and this is gonna bring you to the entire library of Flourish visualizations. And what you see here is going to depend on whether you have a free or a premium or an enterprise-wide uh, uh, an account. So just to keep that in mind that you might see some things on my screen that you won't see on yours. Um, but just take a look here. There's a lot of visualizations. There's more than 50 different visualizations you can create just out of the box here in Flourish. Uh, they start with what they call LBPs, so line bar and pie charts, uh, projection maps, scatter plots, 3D maps, bar chart races, uh, what they call a group of hierarchy graphs, which is tree maps and sunburst diagrams, Sankey diagrams. Then you get in some other things that, you know, I, I think are a little, little more uh, niche, right? So sports diagrams, 3D globes, um, uh, cards, heat maps, and so on and so forth. So you see there's a lot of opportunity here to create a lot of different types of visualizations. So I'm just gonna go back up to the top and just gonna show you very simply about creating, let's just say a line chart. So I'm gonna click the line chart here and Flourish is going to load, load that visualization uh, in the new window. And so there's basically kind of two parts to any Flourish window. There's the preview tab, that's gonna let you see your graph and you're gonna have all of the uh, different menus here on the right side. And then there's the data tab in here which is going to have the actual data. And we're gonna start here with the data tab and because this is obviously where you're gonna load in your data. And there's a bunch of ways to bring data in to Flourish. You can literally copy and paste. If you are working in Excel or CSV or Google Sheets, you can literally grab your data, copy it from there and paste it into here. And so if I were to do that and say, my data were only you know four columns, I can go in here into column E, I can right click and I can say remove column. And if I wanted to add a column back in, I just insert a column right there. It is important to always remember that Flourish is a visualization only tool. You are not going to be able to do any sort of advanced calculations. And by I mean advanced, I mean anything kind of beyond scaling by units of thousands. Really beyond that, you're going to have to do that in whatever tool you're working in, Excel, R, Python, whatever tool you use, you have to do all your calculations there and you're going to bring the data into here. So again, you can copy and paste, you can upload your data. As you can see here, they have lots of opportunities, lots of options that you can load your data in. You can also just, instead of doing it I did, which is delete or, or insert different columns, if you go to the drop down by data, you can actually just clear this, clear this out, and then you can download your data. It is also worth knowing that when you bring in new data, whatever decisions you have made over in this data panel over here are going to be reset unless you select the correct option. And you're gonna see that in some of the future videos how to make a graph when I'm gonna to toggle back and forth between the Flourish interface and say Microsoft Excel where I'll be doing some changes to my data file. When I bring that back into Flourish, I wanna turn that option off of, of resetting because I'm already gonna make my decisions about what to plot. With all that being said, in the right pane over here, you can see that Flourish is gonna sort of prompt you to already set up what it thinks you want to plot. And so there's a little highlightable button here. You can say auto set. And so this is just gonna use their internal algorithms to figure out what you wanna plot. And so for this line chart, you're required to have the label slash time. Notice the little uh, question mark. You can select all these and you get a little help, which is great. Um, and here they've already told you, already prompted you to say, okay, so year is gonna be on the x-axis. Yeah, that makes sense. 
and the values are going to be B to E, G, and H. And so you can see the purple colors here. If I just want to plot, say, say uh, column B and column D, I'll do type B and then comma and then the letter D, and those will highlight, which is a really nice feature. You can sort of like pick that out right away. You can also change how the data are being read in, and there's so, there are some limitations here. So you're going to click this little one, two, three box at the top. You can see for the purple series, it's one, two, three. For the year, it's uh, kind of a pinkish color with a calendar. And there's also a text field. So I can change this to text. And it's not going to let me do that for this one. Uh, oh, because it's being used. So let me go to North America and I'll change this one to text. And that is going to be, I guess that's a gray. So that's, so that's going to be the gray color. So I can go in, for example, for numbers. And they have, I don't know what this is, like six different input formats. And it kind of just changes where the comma and the period are, which is, I think, kind of limiting um, because I might have data coming in with a dollar sign or as scientific notation or with a percent sign at the end. So there are some things to keep in mind here. And as you go through your work with Flourish and, and hopefully watch some of the videos, you'll see how I've tried to overcome some of some of these uh, formatting, uh, what I think are some formatting issues here. Um, so back to the right uh, grid over here, the right, the right um, uh, menu. Y there are lots of other options in here. So if we wanted to have a grid, you wanted to make small multiples, you could set that up uh, right here, which is, which is really nice. You need to, nice, which you need to select a column. So if you wanted to have one graph for the East Asian Pacific countries and another for Latin American and Caribbean countries, you actually need to resort your data because you would want to have one variable that says, okay, here's one group and here's another group. So that's a case where you need to go back to Excel or whatever and reshape your data and then bring it back in. You can also create filters. I'm actually going to create a filter here. We're going to put in uh, A, uh, the letter A here. So that's going to create a filter. Uh, you can see it's it's already prompting down here. And I'll leave this alone. This is for my pop-ups. I don't really need it right now. And let's click back over to the preview and see what we got. So you see, I just have 1900 because I've selected this filter, right? And so that filter sort of just says, okay, pick a year. So we don't like that. We just go back. We just delete it. And we go back to the preview. And we've got this line chart. Terrific. That's great. Simple, simple line chart. Let's go back real quick and just select all these other ones. So let's just do... Make this a little easier. We'll do B to H and give us all of our data here. And now we should get a nice line chart. If I did that right, which I didn't, B hyphen H. And oh, I guess because I deleted that, um, there's this F here, right? This F is kind of blank, so I have to remove that column. So again, you're going to see me learn uh, with you as I make these graphs uh, as part of this as part of this project. And I need to change this back to a number. That's my problem. Back to a number. And now I can do B to H. And now I should get, there we go, all purple. And we get our preview. Now we're here and now we can get into the menus. It's worth noting, I'm not gonna go through all the menus because across the 50 plus graphs you can make in Flourish, there are more than 150 different menus. And some of them I will say overlap in what they do, but not their name. So for example, you see here pop-ups and panels. Sometimes they're called pop-up, sometimes they're called pop-ups. So there's some inconsistency here, I would say, in how Flourish works. But a lot of this is, as it is a browser-based tool, is just a lot of clicking it and finding things. Because we're in the line bar and pie charts section, we can actually do some changes. We can select a different chart right here. I won't do that now. You can go to grid of charts, uh, you can change your controls, lots of things you can do here. I'm just going to show you the basics. Uh, colors, uh, they do have a drop down menu with some other uh, colors built in. So I could just click that automatically. Um, I can also do some overrides here and we'll do a lot of this when it comes to uh, customizing our graphs. And you can change lots of other things in here. It's worth noting that as you go into the menus, you will often find a, an option. I'm going to try to find one here that says styling and the styling button is what can allow you to go a little bit further so let's take our ticks and our labels for the x-axis i don't like how these are 45 degrees if i click styling i get a little drop down menu and i can change that to zero degrees so it's highlighted right there or, or it's horizontal right there similarly for the y-axis this is a really nice feature i think that you can change how you want your labels to be positioned do you want them above that line or below that line i think that's a nice little touch um, but you might feel like, okay, we don't need this to be in billions. 
So let's change the unit. You can actually go down here and change the units at some point. I'd have to go back and find it. There's a way to do it. And I'm sorry, I can't find it right now, but there's a way to do it where you can actually divide. It might be number formatting, that's where it is. Uh, if you go into advanced number formatting, you can divide by, let's say, billions. There we go. Oh, I don't want to multiply. I want to divide by billions. And so I could do something like that. The four menus you will always find in every Flourish chart menu is layout, header, footer, and accessibility. Great menus. Layout is going to let you set the background color, the main font, the widths, and all sorts of margins. The header is where you're going to put in your title, your subtitle, and other text, and control the border and whether you want a logo. The footer is similarly going to let you control the source and the, uh, the source note. And uh, if you want a logo down there and accessibility is going to let you add a screen reader, some alt text for your screen readers. So these four menus will be on every chart. And it's just worth keeping in mind. The header drop down is where you do your titling. I have, it took me a while to sort of figure that out. I'm always looking for like the title box or the chart title box. It's in header. That's where all the titling is held. So there's a lot of things you can control. There's a lot of things you can't control in Flourish, and we're going to find uh, what those are over the course of this new Back to Viz Basics Flourish Edition project. So now that you sort of have a basic lay of the land, make sure you set up your account at Flourish. Make sure you set up account at the Back to Viz Basics data.world project, and let's get going and learn how to create some graphs in the Flourish tool.